There are calls for the government to ah. stop oil, oil, gas and coal mining in New Zealand and they've been labelled as short-sighted by an energy industry commentator. Ah, yes. This is after Green Press's Russell Norman said yesterday on this programme that the government's stance on transitioning away from fossil fuels isn't good enough and says that no new mining or exploration permits should be granted at all. Let's go to the editor of Energy News, Gavin Evans. Good morning to you. Morning, Guy. What is your view on this and where the government has got to? Well, I think the problem with the Green Peace approach is it, it tries to take a world view that, um, you know, we can't develop. He's quite, Russell's quite right. You know, we can't develop all the world's coal, gas and, and oil reserves. Um, but unfortunately, New Zealand does have to use its resources, you know, particularly if we're going to reduce our, our use of coal, which is one of the big drivers of emissions in this country. So, you know, I, I would argue we actually need more exploration because we're going to need more gas in the next 20 and 30 years. OK, but how is that an argument for opening a new open-cast coal mine on the West Coast, for example? Oh, well, OK, well, coal's slightly different, and it depends on what type of coal you're talking about, of course, because a lot of the coal on the South Island is actually exported for steel making. Um, and New Zealand coals, the coking coals, are very good, and they have some special properties which uh, makes them, you know, creates quite a bit of demand for them. So um, the world is always going to need s- steel. We are always going to need steel. Um, so what's the argument for stopping uh, coal mining for, for coking well, coal? Well, um, I think the argument is it's destroying the planet. Well, I think, I think you're confusing thermal coal, which is used in power generation. Um, I mean, all things we do in life pretty much uh, create emissions, and that's true of whether we use gas or oil or coal. And I, and I think the, the debate really has to get, around, get back to emissions and what we do about them because there's a trade-off to be had, and I think we have to decide if, if something is valuable enough, like steel production or power supply, then we probably you know, have to accept that there are going to be emissions. Well, even, we, we though, have, we, even if that means um, exacerbating climate change, which could destroy us all? No, not necessarily. No, no, hear me out. I mean, we've got to try and reduce our emissions. So should, we should try and find those emissions which are the easiest to dispense with, have the lowest value. You know, um, examples like in New Zealand, a common one is road transport. You know, we could actually switch the, the light vehicle fleet out pretty pretty quickly to electricity. And that would, at pretty low cost too, to the economy. Stopping steel making, that's a lot harder. You know, stopping cement making, that's a lot harder. Stopping food processing, that's a lot harder. Um, you know, where we can swap out coal use for gas, we should, because, you know, the emissions... I don't think Greenpeace is arguing that we should be stopping food production. I mean, what, what the argument that um, Russell Norman and others are basing it on is information, including from the World Bank and, and others, um, saying that we can't burn even half of the fossil fuel reserves we have now yep, sure. and, hang on, and still stay within the limits that would be needed to keep the warming of the planet under two degrees. We can't burn the existing ones now. Yes. So why would we be digging up coal and drilling for oil if we can't even burn what we've got now? That's the argument, isn't it? What, how do you respond to that? Well, the, that's the argument. And unfortunately, it only looks at um, those reserves in terms of a global context. And if you think about it, those those res- reserves range from coal through to oil sands, you know, lots of the nasties, high emitters, which we can, you know, the world has to learn to do without. But within that suite, there are relatively lower emitting hydrocarbons like gas, for instance. The other problem with that... Yeah, but you always no, no, avoid coal you, and oil, though, can don't I, you? Can, I, can you let me finish? The other problem with that global view is that that's, that's a world view. A big gas resource in Brazil doesn't actually help us process our dairy products, process our um, mixed steel. You know, we we need our own supply. So whether there's a global, you know, if you like, oversupply of resources, that doesn't actually help us. We, we're an island in the South Pacific and we have to be able to ensure we have our own energy supplies of all types. So keep keep going, you, you reckon? Keep, dri- di- keep digging and drilling? Well, again, it comes down to what 
what we're prepared to accept as a country. Um, at the moment, we have about, I think, the forward supplies of gas for about 11 years. So, you know, the nature of gas is that as you use it, you have to keep finding more. And some of that can be from within existing fields. But some of it, you know, if we want to have a supply out 20, 30, 40 years, and this is the kind of time frame that these decisions are made, then we probably do have to have some more exploration, either onshore or offshore. All right. Well, thanks for your time and your perspective on this this morning. That's Gavin Evans with Energy News, the editor of Energy News. It's 26 past eight. The United States House of Representatives is voting right now on Donald Trump's tax reform package. The bill.